Welcome to the Creator VR Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and today we have a lot of cool guests, uh, specifically the filmmaking niche of VR chat. And we have Gabs. Yay. Yeah, we have yeah. Ari. <laughs> Hello. And we have Kango. Hello. And we have Legend. Pleasure to be here. And all of these guests are going to tell us something cool today about what they do in their free time, or at least what they do with filmmaking. And why not start this off with an introduction of, uh, of yourself? Who are you? Who who is sitting in on these nice little comfy chairs? <laughs> Let's start with Gabs. Uh, hi, I'm Gab. Uh, Gab Jenkins, full name. People usually call me Gab. Um, I'm a I'm a filmmaking student, and I uh, use uh, VR as a way to kind of work on fundamentals and try to be as creative as possible because it's a pretty good medium for people who are starting out in filmmaking. That's pretty neat. Okay. Ariel. I'm Ariel Emerald. I came into VR chat uh, in October 2021, and since then I've been spending a lot of time in the VR chat club scene and also working on making movies and be pursuing my lifelong passion of creating films using the near limitless resources that we have here in VR chat. True. Let's go. That's cool. Okay. Kango. <laughs> hey, I'm Khan. Um, I'm a studio director with uh, Studio Penrose, which is a new uh, studio that we just made. Um, I've been, I guess, filming in VR for close to four years now, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I usually specialize in, I guess, narrative fictional storytelling. Ooh, okay, okay. Legend. Hello, I'm Legend50210, or just Legend. I have about 3.5 thousand hours in VR chat, and I'm a new and aspiring VR film director, a filmmaker, who has um, a very keen eye for fight choreography, and I really enjoy uh, pushing the I enjoy pushing the boundaries of what can be possible in VR chat. Let's go. So, as you can see, we have a lot of very different filmmakers with different genres that they're also covering in their films, which is the whole like idea I had for this podcast is to show you not only like different filmmakers, but also like filmmakers that also like make films from or in different niches, like fighting, for example, or like something more emotional or like something that is more, I'd say more dark. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. And let me pull up the uh, first question really, uh, really quick here. And the first question is, how do you find out about VRChat and what made you stay in VRChat? Guess. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I, I had been like surrounded, like very subtly surrounded with VR content since high school. Like Uganda Knuckles was like such a big meme, like everywhere, everyone knew about it. Not like not everyone knew it was from VRChat. They were just like, haha, silly, silly, funny meme, 2018, haha. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I really only started getting involved in VR chat very recently. I played it once on desktop in 2021, and then I really started getting into it in summer 2022, and I finally got my headset because I was bored one summer, and I saw like videos from Fia and Thrill and those kinds of people, and I was like, yeah, this sounds fun. Might as well just drop $300 <laughs> on a headset. And then uh, I ended up meeting just a ton of cool people. Legend was one of the first people I ever met in VR chat, and we've been, we've been friends to this day. And just... And since since I'm a filmmaker, like I was, I, I saw the potential using this medium for just developing developing my skills. Um, Legend introduced me to a lot of VR chat film content, and that really inspired me. And I ended up uh, I ended up making uh, a quick short film uh, back in November, which was very nice, and it was a very cool experience. And I have been doing stuff ever since in VR. That's cool. Yeah, 2018 is kind of like the start of 
for many people like Uganda Knuckles, you know, <laughs> yeah, just like the the, the 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 group consciousness of, of <laughs> all, all of the art chat. Yeah. True. <laughs> true. <laughs> and yeah, that's where most of most of the people just started VR chat. That's true. Okay. Mm. <laughs> um, well, I, uh, as I said, I came to VR chat in October 2021. I was always interested in making movies in the platform. It was something that was on my mind when I was getting started. Uh, but I didn't make any movies for the first year because I really, the main reason I came into VR chat was to work on overcoming my social anxiety. And I, it took me like a year of making friends and developing connections and practicing my social skills to actually be able to feel comfortable enough that I could actually begin pursuing my passion in making movies. And my first short film was a little project that I collaborated on with my best friend, one of my best friends, Chloe. And we were just talking and we came up with this idea for a little race movie. And we found a cool world that had these little motorbikes and another mm -hmm. friend of ours joined us. And in a couple days, we shot this film called Rematch that I wrote. And that movie ended up being getting into two VR film festivals and achieving a lot of success. And it got my name out there to the broader VR chat filmmaking community. And I got to meet lots of incredible people, including all of the wonderful folks who, uh, I know now and work with today and every all the studios and um after Fia hosted her TBRS festival I wanted to decide I decided to make my next short film and I focused on an idea that included lots of personal stories from my time in the VR chat club scene mm -hmm. which is called Ulterior Motives and that film was just screened today at Rain Dance Film Festival Woo! in Let's in go London. Let's go <laughs> And it's really been really <laughs> special to see the success of that project and just the success of my films in general. And I have so many ambitious plans and ideas of what I want to do in the world of VR chat filmmaking. And I'm just, I'm really grateful that we have the space to make films with the near limitless resources that we have here. And I'm just excited to see where we can go with this. It's true. It's true. There's still a lot that can be. Uh, there, there's no limits basically in VR chat, and no one is setting the limits, kind of, especially e except for the terms of service and stuff. But you know, the with when it comes to creativity, there's like no limits, and I think with when it comes uh, to filmmaking, we s we can still create so ma many like cool experiences uh, to show other people or even show our own experience in a film film in a film what was it in a filmography expression i think that's the word i was uh thinking about but yeah mm -hmm. i have a lot of respect for the movie that you've uh, shown at rain dance as well ulterior Mo motives i think that was really like something emotional when i watched it and it was it was really really interesting and you could also say it kind of like depicts the reality as well of how it kind of like is sometimes at the uh at Viachet Raves and basically for other people as an experience. And it was really something interesting to watch. I had a lot of respect for it. It's really cool. It's it's also, Thank I really you. enjoy everyone doing like these cool f films that <laughs> I enjoy to watch as a viewer, you know, <laughs> as a as someone who is really like invested into like films and a little bit of filmmaking as well. Mm. So yeah, I respect that. Okay, Gango. Oh. So I joined VR Chat in I think it was actually late 2017, weirdly enough. Uh, I didn't actually get VR until I think four years ago, um, pretty close to when I actually started doing filmmaking. Um, and I guess what actually kept me to to stay was, well, it's a social game. I like meeting new people, um, talking mm -hmm. with people, going to worlds. I had a lot of friend groups um, early on. Um, obviously, they've grown, developed, or gone like every <laughs> social game is but um the idea of meeting new people was what kept me staying the film stuff came in actually pretty a lot later in my career in that sense mm -mm. okay mm. okay but uh what i think is interesting is um I'm, i've also like watched m m many of your videos uh, or films one of them is um i think it was called emergence which also is a drain dance Yes. 
Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> um, so Emergence. <laughs> uh, so that one actually hasn't released um, to like our YouTube slash VR chat audience yet. Um, but simply put, Rain Dan- or oh my God, not Rain Dance. Emergence was our studio's first um, film as a new studio. Um, so I used to be with Metacosm Studios, but I left um, to go independent and I formed Studio Penrose, which will be very centered around our cinematic universe. Um, and Emergence, as the name kind of implies, is like the emergence of the viewer and also us as a studio. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of told through the character of Lucina Mai, and it's only the start of our well, series. Um, oh. And it's premiering at Raindance. It did today in person, like uh, what Ariel mentioned. It was at part of the same uh, venue. Um, but uh, it is really, really cool to see that our VR chat films have made it into the real world, um, if you will. Um, something that Joe Hunting, someone that uh, is mm-hmm. one of the hosts of Rain Dance Immersive, um, did with his film We Met in VR. Uh, it's happened again. You know, it's really cool. Wow, it basically bo- uh, broke the boundaries of VR chat of VR and brought it inside out of uh, to reality. Yeah. Just like with uh, uh, Ariel's movie as well, Ulterior Motives also got like um, shown off at the Rain Dance Festival. Um, so it broke boundaries basically, and that's just crazy. It's it's just awesome. By the way, I, I noticed that in every film, every film you are involved in, there's always a train. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's up uh, with that? <laughs> <laughs> what's so? Uh, hey Kong, what do you do for a living? What's what do you do job? for a living, Kong? <laughs> what's your job? Okay. So <laughs> as a kid growing up, I always liked trains, and my ability to use cameras and stuff actually came from that. I do photography for railroad stuff in real life as a hobby. Um, and so I'm a photographer in real life as a hobby, but also my job is I'm um, a rail transit designer, signals designer. So I design like rail systems specifically here in Minnesota, but I've done like projects across the US and it's just a hobby of mine. So I kind of just in a sort of way that like anime kind of uses trains as part of their storytelling, I kind of use them as well. Um, partly because I like them, but also the idea of like movement as well as like change and relocation and separation. Like, there's a weird amount of like. I just, I th- did I just grab the cup? Oh no, you oh, grabbed oh, it. I grabbed it. There's a weird amount of like uh, metaphors you can draw from trains. Um, if you ever are interested in stuff like that, there's a lot of YouTube videos describing how mm. Japan uses trains in anime. Kind of the same way I actually use them in mm. my stuff. It's it's funny because like that that anime influence kind of like has transferred into VR chat because there's so many like anime fans in VR chat and now there's like a bunch of like metros and sub and subways and trains and all that kind of stuff and that's just made its way into VR and that's my latest film. It, some, <laughs> someone yeah someone someone like inadvertently affected VR filmmaking just because of how many there are. It's it's I think that's really cool. Hmm. That's anyway. definitely something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I can definitely say uh, Kango lost trains. That's for sure. <laughs> Period. <Yeah. laughs> all right, all right. Back. Let's get back to the question real quick. I completely forgot. Um, okay, Legend. <laughs> How did you find <laughs> out about Viachet and what made you stay? Oh. So originally for me... Um, It started off with trying to discover the idea of what VR was, and a lot of that actually stemmed many, many years ago, back when the pilot to um, the Fairly Odd Parents had aired, when the premise utilized this game system where you put on this visor and it brought you into this fictional world that did yet felt so real. Taking that concept as a kid, I remember always wanting to have that sort of experience, and it was not, you know, it wasn't you know, around us at the time. It was an idea, and at, at the time I thought it was just something that would just be, you know, like a, like just an idea. It was here, mm. and it would be gone, until eventually we started seeing content creators start to get their hands on this interesting new tech known as the Oculus Development Kit. Right. And I remember seeing uh, creators like PewDiePie, for example, who would be experimenting with this stuff with the, like, the Xbox controller, right? It would be, like, seated, like, three DOF experiences, and that's what kind of made me think we're starting to get close. This thing that I thought about many, many years ago is starting to become a reality. And it would not be until sometime in my college era 
when I was taking a course that was structured more around taking a problem and finding a creative, inventive solution to solve that problem. And the professor had brought us to a separate building where um, they had a bunch of experimental things going on there. They had a student who was doing speed runs for Mario 64, believe it or not. They had, they had a separate section that had like a green screen and motion capture suit. But more specifically, they had a... Oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to grab that. <laughs> the hands. Uh, they had a game design student there who was working on a um, very experimental type of software for um, the, the original HTC Vive. And the professor was looking at it and was asking the whole class while we were all there and asking if they wanted to have anybody test their new game that they were working on. And let me tell you, not only was I the first one to raise their hand, but I was actually the only one to raise their hand to try out this experimental sort of hardware. It was really exciting. Though clunky, it gave me an idea about what could be, what's possible in the current day. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was literally after that day is when I bought myself a PlayStation VR. Uh, I spent a lot of my time in Rec Room, and I enjoyed a lot of the social aspects, being able to interact with people from like all around the world. And come many years, you know, Quest 1, it releases tetherless VR, working as a hybrid system to work with or without a PC, with the inclusion of VR chat. Right. And having known uh, what VR chat was, the sense of community <clears throat> and all the fun interactions that would happen. I never joined during the Knuckles craze, but I was aware of, like, what the potentials were, all the levels of, um, say, uh, you the ingenuity that exists in this in this ecosystem and i eventually got myself the uh, the quest one and then i was so sold on the idea that i wanted to put myself through complete and utter immersion and i will take as many steps as it could to feel like i could be here in as many layers as i could years pass until i eventually get a pc and start slowly upgrading everything that i had get a quest 2 get a base station with three trackers get index controllers but even still then that still wasn't enough for me i got more trackers all the way up to 11 full points of tracking upgraded to a headset with full facial tracking and i've i've just loved the sense of community of all kinds of people that i've met honestly i feel like i am as close to vr chat as i can be everything that i can do and all the ways that i do certain things it really feels like a secondary life that i'm that i'm living here I think I'm definitely living my childhood life as I am right now. True, true. Oh, that uh, when you talked about the fairy old parents uh, episode, I have it so vividly in my head, where they're like, jump over the maze trying to get their friend friends back, right? I think that's the yeah, episode. Yeah. Oh man, I love that one. I love that one. Fairy old parents <laughs> was always like a, a good good show and still to this day i really watch it and uh, honestly you said you so many trackers i could put like <laughs> a cash register sound every time you say i'm putting this i'm upgrading this <laughs> but yeah it's, it's oh cool my gosh, yeah. it's cool it's cool it's, it's crazy yeah somehow you, <laughs> you you gotta get to vr you know can you start with one headset and you get so invested into something so interesting that you just you know throw all the money in just like i did with the quest 3 today well yep I'm welcome to vr chat the most expensive free game <laughs> <ever made. laughs> i'm making bad financial Legend decisions can, what you can confirm <laughs> <laughs> all right all right oh the next question i also have to check if i'm actually recording this okay i'm actually recording this that, that would be awful if not okay the no, next question <laughs> is very related to filmmaking in general. And that is, how did you get into filmmaking in the first place? How do you just, you know, start making a film? Or how did you get, get into the whole topic of filming something in the first place? <laughs> in the uh, this, is, this is fun. Um, I actually started making like really dumb shorts with my cousins when i was like in fifth and sixth grade we made stuff like with an ipad and iMovie and we like like when, when my when my cousins came to visit me we would just be like oh my god let's make something and then we just did in like a day or two and we used like the iMovie trailer thing and we used and we did all that and and i i wish i had them downloaded on my computer they're somewhere but i i want to rewatch them because they were so fun to make. um i that was how i initially started um i 
I went through the seventh, the middle school phase of making Minecraft YouTube videos yes. on iMovie. So I learned how to edit. <laughs> no, stop laughing at me. <laughs> and then, and then, okay. And then, and then in high school, um, I, I made the choice between doing a uh, drama or doing like TV film production. And I chose uh, TV and film production. And I had some like, absolutely amazing inspiring teachers that really were super helpful and really just and pushed me to be way better in in kind of in in the film production and media production sort of sense and i took those classes all throughout high school and in senior year i was a ta and i helped other freshmen who were just starting uh just get started and and have fun uh with themselves and then I uh, started going to college for it, and I now I'm president of like a, a, a film production club, which is pretty cool. What? But it's just been it's been That's with cool. me for like years and years and years, and I just know I, I can keep growing as a filmmaker. That's the whole point of just keep making stuff. <laughs> as yeah. if the filmmaking is like flowing through your veins. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it feels like that sometimes, but then it feels like. There's nothing that I'm just like sitting there and <laughs> wondering why there's no motivation. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's I've I've been I've been interested in it for a very long time. <laughs> oh god, the iMovie is just it, the moment you mention it, it gives me so much nostalgia. Everyone knows. Oh everyone. my god, back when I was in Spain, <laughs> it, that, that's a that's a whole different story. I I actually used to make. Do um, you guys remember like the stop motion application on on your phone where you like have to like take every picture i think and so yeah what i was doing yeah. i was playing with little legos and just making them boop, 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 yeah one by one like i know so many people walk. get started with lego stop motion yeah yeah it's a great way to get started yeah oh there was like a halo stop motion thing that i used to watch but that was oh, so long ago okay ari <laughs> um well for me filmmaking has always been my lifelong passion i've wanted to make movies since I was a little kid, since I first started to learn about how the biggest Hollywood movies are made, and I started to watch all the behind-the-scenes features, how those films are made, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, it's really just been the thing that's always been the driving force in my life. I mean, as long as I can remember, movies have been my really my purpose on, on this <laughs> earth. And it, I went through a long period where making movies was something that was just incredibly difficult for me to do and the main reason is really just I was so alone and I was so isolated and I didn't have anybody around me to make movies with and I didn't have the resources that I needed to make movies with and I didn't you know I didn't last too long in college I, I didn't stay after the first year of college so I didn't really go to film school and I just was alone in my room not doing anything for the longest time but when i came into vr chat then i realized i have all these people around me that i can make a movie with and that's what really enabled me to cross the barrier into actually making films and actually putting my skills on the line to make something and even if i my vr chat films were never going to see any kind of major success. I always saw it as like, this is my opportunity to put my skills to the test and to actually mm. try, what it, try what it's like to be a director and to push myself to achieve these goals that I've wanted for my entire life. And it's just always something that I'm fighting for, always something that I'm, I'm pushing myself harder. And if, I, if I'm making a project that doesn't impress me, I don't want to do it. I want to make projects that are always advancing my skills and challenging me and enabling me to learn something and push further and further towards achieving my goals. And I want every single project I make to be better than the last one and an uh, improvement over on what I can do and what resources I have and what people want to work with me. And I'm, I just am always trying to grow and and build myself up and this VR chat stuff is just so easy to just make films cheaply quickly and with all kinds of people that I never would have had the chance right. to work with otherwise and it's really fantastic right I resonate with what you said a lot because it's very difficult if you if you're just by yourself trying to work on a movie that could maybe involve more people than one 
and it's just super difficult to also i don't know for me it was at least camera angles and all that stuff if you don't really know much about it since i you know i'm a, I'm a beginner but i really resonate with what you say it's very difficult in the beginning but it's always difficult in the beginning if you think about it you just gotta take the few steps and then you're falling and you just gotta stand up and just keep keep doing it. and you said that um keep doing keep taking the opportunity to film something this is probably really something very important for for people who not only are filmmakers on on the table right here but also for people who want to start filmmaking is to just keep going don't give up it's it, it might be uh, it might be a far-fetched idea that you have in your head but you can still still put it on paper and you can still make something really good out of it and with in VRChat, you know it's cheap it's easy it's quick it's all that you mentioned it's just it's just that it's really good it's very it's something why for example we use um VRChat as as like a film making production in some sort of sense because it's cheap it's it's easy we can get people that we want as like actors or we can we get people who know how to operate a camera and that's probably why we also do the movies in VR chat it's just it's just great and i very resonate with what you say that's that's real that's real okay then kango <laughs> oh um <clears throat> so i've always had interest in filmmaking a uh, very common story right but um back then like it actually kind of started around high school when one of my uh classmates got really big uh in filmmaking because his short film was shown i believe at like in a national geographic um film festival and mm -hmm. i was thinking at the time um wow i can't not i cannot do that there's no way like there's no way i'm ever going to be able to do what he did um and so for the longest amount of time i figured it was pretty much impossible like look i can't draw a circle so animation's out of the picture right and I don't have contacts to get animation. And like, that's just one example. Cameras in real life, actors in real life. It's just, it ain't happening. Um, but weirdly enough, and Gab, you're not alone. Your boy started making Minecraft type videos. <laughs> well, that's go. kind of, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's unbelievably where I got some semblance of like learning how to do a little bit. Um, it's really weird because if you look at my, minecraft machinimas if you will from way back mm. then in 2015 um they actually have very similar like themes to what i've done here in vr chat and so um when i came and started playing vr chat came on the game um i realized that this was kind of my opportunity um and weirdly enough way back when i started a series called lpd files and that was the first thing i ever did in vr chat film and the day that I started filming was when um, Metacosm Studios released Into the Metaverse. And so, or sorry, the trailer to Into the Metaverse. The <laughs> the, in the they released and, Into the Metaverse? <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, that was when I was like, oh, I'm not the only one anymore. Um, I, obviously, uh, Acme Jack had uh, derailed up at the time too. And so that was kind of the catalyst, was seeing all these things popping up. Um, when I realized this is the place I want to try this out at. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, you took the opportunity and uh, went into VRG and yeah, took the opportunity basically. And that's uh, something I also mentioned uh, with Ari is Ari also took the opportunity. I think we all took the opportunity to use VRG as, you know, as a film kind of like production. Yeah. And it's it's great, it's great. You know, micro videos, you know, that's that's the first step for many of us. You know, micro videos. Yeah, yeah. Um, I gotta, I gotta say, I, uh, yeah, survival, survival mode back then when I was twelve years old. So it was not easy, not easy. <laughs> but yeah, we all started. I mean, yeah, that's with... where PewDiePie started, right? <laughs> hmm? There you go. <laughs> We all kind of started with this, and if not, then you know, we're still in VR to making movies. That's a that's the most important thing. All right, Legend, how about you? <laughs> uh, for me, I my filming sort of 
It started a bit uh, when I was in high school. I actually don't have as much of a filming background as many people do. A lot of it starts from the fact that I've only ever really taken one photography course in uh, high school. And seeing how I was able to convey such a story with just images at the time, it made me want to experiment a bit with what I could do with video. And at the time, I wanted to experiment that with... um, one of the video games that I was playing at the time, which was For Honor, it would say it's a third-person fighting game. That's the main, main gist of it. And they had released like a spectator mode, and my thought was maybe I can make some sort of thing with this. I can make like a machinima out of it. Though not Minecraft like these two. <laughs> I I took a different approach with it. I wanted to make something that was of a higher caliber. I wanted to put like as much effort into something that was so different. And it saw a little bit of success. I did like one for like one year and then another one another year. It was very slow, but there was a problem with it. And it was that I had a lot of difficulty with having people be available. A lot of trouble with getting people to be on hand for this. And this was at the time like before I truly got into VR chat. But when I did get into VR chat, there was a friend that I was joining in on. We were watching uh, one of the Dragon Ball Z movies. It was uh, one about Broly, I believe it was. And there was one time I kind of liked the idea about being able to watch movies in, you know, in VR. It felt like I was kind of at a real theater. And there was a time I went there on my own accord. And when I was there, um, I saw a poster for a VR chat film made entirely in virtual reality. And it was made by Acme Jack. It was derailed. And I was really curious about how that was going to be. I didn't have a lot of hopes for it at the time because I didn't know what it would be like. But it, it, watching it. And me was interestingly captivated by it. I, like, I just saw some interesting beauty behind it. It seemed like how something was so possible. I wanted to make something like that for myself. I didn't have many of the tools for it at the time, but eventually I kind of wanted to start experimenting with what I could do. This was also at the time before the implementation of EAC when mods were a thing. Mm-hmm. And I was experimenting with a mod called Freeze Frame, which allowed me to be... Um, to be able to make looped animations of myself. At the time, I had also done a lot of martial arts practice, and I wanted to do something with that as well. So I started to mix up together being able to fight along with being able to record myself on multiple ends and being able to see what I can make with that. And I had like a huge amalgamation of like proof of concept, and I was like, I should turn this into a trailer for funds and see what happens. I turned it into a trailer, and it got amazing... Um, an amazing reception and I'm like alright well I think there's something in this I think put, do something with what I have here because there is potential mm-hmm. and then come the latter half of June four straight days of non-stop filming and um, I worked as hard as I could on it working with so much so many sounds and by October 2022 uh, my very first VR chat film, Sync, was released. It has um, three separate VR film festivals, uh, VRCon, uh, TVRS, and Two Easy Dragons Film Festival. And I honestly have that film to thank a lot for how much success it has brought me, as I have met a lot of amazing and talented creators. And, I mean, even since like the removal of those mods, since I had learned that Metacosm Studios uh, was completely unaffected by the change of EAC, since their methods were just, you know, as vanilla as you could be, right? It was without all these other artificial tools. I took a lot of inspiration from that, and it gave me a lot of incentive to keep going. And it's since then is when I've started tackling one of the biggest hurdles of VR chat, which was with latency. And it's a study oh, right. that Gab and myself have been very hard at work at, and I'm very excited to post some of the results on that very soon. Oh, that's going to be cool. That's going to be. And Sync was a great movie. I'm saying it. I'm putting my fist mm. down on this table and I'm saying it, okay? It was great. It was great. All of your movies was great. It, it was <laughs> Look, okay. <laughs> they're just amazing. I think they're great. I really loved loved uh, Sync. That was really something else, seeing like fighting scenes in VR chat and knowing that there's latency and all this choreography, it it just worked so well. When I was watching this, I was like, how do you guys made make this happen? And because latency is obviously the issue, right? And it's just 
uh, not with that film because that film was the only time where I was the only body actor in the entire film mm-hmm. because I was using looped animations of myself. Oh, right, right. It was only we came, we only came into the issue with latency with our second film that I worked on with Gab for our Ferality Silva showcase. Uh, submission yeah. which was that, that was basically the proof of concept for what we were working on as well we we, we came up with the stuff we did the testing and we're like okay let's make something short and 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 put that all in the practice and we did and it turned out awesome it turned out really cool and oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i saw it uh i saw it on twitter that that um the fighting scene in a dojo right on like the yes Yes. Uh, also, uh, also, also, everything that, um, uh, like everything we mention here, like movies. I, I hope you guys don't mind if I just blend it in, um, while you're talking, so people can oh, yeah, yeah, see, yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah, see sure. what's Go for it. Uh, yeah, okay, and I'll also link it and stuff. Okay, um, let's just move on to the next question, which I think is really, really interesting because I sometimes struggle with ideas, and this question is, how do you get ideas for a short film like how do you get like this this sparkle to make an uh, to make a mm. short film or like the get get the idea of it yeah go ahead yeah. Gavs. There, there there's kind of a wide variety there's kind of a wide variety of like how how it can come to pass um from my experience like a lot of it has been like uh th- taking taking real life experiences and dramatizing them a little bit sometimes you find like a piece of music that you really like uh and you and you kind of build build stuff off of that which is which is what i did for um the place where the spirits are which is the thing that i made back in november uh with legend and um um some sometimes there's just like this this one scene that you have in mind and and you and you sometimes you just build an entire short film around that which is what i did irl for another thing that i'm editing very slowly (laughs) but there's there's kind of a lot of ways it you you just know you know when it happens you know when you get that idea because you like feel that rush of inspiration like okay i can do this and this and this and this and this and i know how to i i know how i can kind of build on this idea and you 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 know it when you feel it basically at least in my experience Mm -hmm. like in kind of like an instinct yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. for sure. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, interesting. Anyway. <laughs> so, just to rephrase the question, so the question is, how do you get ideas for your films? Right. Right. So, in my case, I get my ideas for films from just all sorts of places. I, I can't say that I've gotten two ideas for a film from the same place. They're always from different things. I guess I'm inspired a lot by my own life and my own experiences. And if there's an experience that I've had that's particularly um, impactful, then I might feel inclined to express that in some way with an idea for a film, which was the case with Ulterior Motives. A lot of that movie is based on my own personal experiences Mm -hmm. in the club scene. And... I was expressing a lot of emotions there, but I have other, I have other ideas that come from just maybe inspired by other pieces of media that I've seen. Music is something that inspires me a lot. I've definitely written movies that were heavily inspired by music that I've listened to. Um, I will be inspired by a VR chat world. My first film rematch that I made in VR chat was inspired almost entirely by the world that we found. Um, stuff like that really as long as I find one thing to be the seed then it can blossom out into an idea and I will know how to blossom it out and how to build onto it and how the idea grows from there that that comes naturally to me ah it's just a question of uh where that seed is going to come from it might come from a song might come from an experience it might come from inspired by another piece of media or something like that um but yeah I think that covers it I think that's probably the most beautiful way to say it is finding the seed and letting it grow. It's very poetic, but that's also true. It's also true. If you find some, if you find the seed in that case, for example, of the Archid world or music, and just water it in that sense, and just work uh, work on it, and just build on it as well, script wise or I don't know, idea wise, then it can blossom into something so beautiful. 
like um, ulterior motives, for example, or your film, for example, Pen Penrose Proto Protocol, for example, or Sync, or the films you guys create. Technically, this also is like a a, a resolution out of finding a seed and getting inspired and letting something grow and blossom. And that's really, I think that's a very poetic way to say it. It's great. It's really great. Thank you. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Can go. Oh, um, <clears throat> so I think a lot of my inspiration, kind of like Ariel's, it varies from time to time. Um, but generally speaking, I've always been interested in character writing and just characters in general, like people, like who each person is, like what this person's story is. And so all it takes for me usually is thinking of a character and then writing them. Um, music is a huge inspiration for scenes, though, for me. Um, so, like, characters inspire me to write the stories, but music inspires me to write the scenes. Um, because, look, you and I both know that going on a drive at late night while blasting some good, like, music, you can start coming up with ideas as you're driving. Like, that's mm -hmm. a lot of what I do. Is like, I'll be driving and just, like, listening to music, and I'm like, you know what? That's a cool st story idea. Um, and I guess there also is obviously the influence of like um, inspiration from other media, like films that I watch, movies that I watch. Um, but basically, because of the like character development um, sort of influence and inspiration from writing characters, um, I now kind of have this world. The City of New Millennia is my universe or our universe that Studio Penrose takes place in. And instead of it now being characters that are the inspiration for writing, it's that city. Because mm -hmm. all these characters are now in that city. And each one of them has an interesting story. And there's going to be a lot more about that very soon. Emergence Ooh. was just kind of the start of it. Um, I haven't even like really dived into it yet. but Oh, but that's going to be something cool. Kind of... I can imagine... I don't know if... Th that's just a thought but what if some of the um, people just like cross each other or something that would be crazy thinking just about it because they're all in the city that's sick that's a good good concept as well that's really great amazing wow i think i haven't actually <laughs> thought about this this is, this is giving me ideas now okay <laughs> i can touch on that um once we get to the question about like uh like future plans mm, okay okay right right okay legend Give it off. Uh, for me, uh, you know, the okay. Was, the question was what again? Excuse me. Uh, it was, how do you get ideas for a short film? Yes. Okay. So for me, a lot of it tends to fall down towards sound design. Uh, typically, like most, it is with music. But there are some times where I take two different approaches to it. The first one is where I take the the old mentality of where you hear music and it puts like this love this this immaculate scene in your head that you just see play out each and every single time. I take that rather I take that quite literally, and I actually what I'll do is actually the first way that I did the teaser trailer for my film Sync. I actually took a song and I wanted to use it for um, the teaser trailer at least mm. and i was marking down on timestamps what was going to happen at this fragment of the song and i would try and structure out and act out what that length was going to be and the other time is because i do a lot of um i play like lots of different types of um fighting games and studying of different ways that the body moves and how people move and fight choreography i actually just finished watching the raid with ariel one night fantastic movie oh um, I can't believe I missed that. Ah, <laughs> I wanted to watch that so bad. <laughs> Let's continue. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, I um, I like to do a lot of recreations of this sort of stuff, and um, find ways that I can like make references in the mo in the in these films that I do. Uh, I could probably point out to like a couple of ones that are diff references from different things, but. Um, some of the games that I do play where like some of these ideas come from are they're not like the typical fighting games that most people think of when they hear fighting games like Tekken, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter. I don't play those games. I'm not a big fan of juggle your opponent and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I like things that have a bit more dynamicacy to it. Like uh, in the Uncharted series, right? There's lots of movement, there's lots of way these these characters are moving around like on moving platforms, the ways that all this sort of interaction. Um 
some stuff that's more vigorous and slow, like in For Honor, and other things that are more um, open-ended, like in the Batman Arkham series or in uh, Sifu, for example. I love Sifu. Sifu. I like mm-hmm. taking, yes, mm-hmm. I love taking his ideas and incorporating it with my existing knowledge of martial arts and just mm-hmm. seeing what I can do with it. So cool. So cool. Yeah, there, there was something that you just reminded me of. It was just in my head. And I completely forgot it because I was listening. But, oh no, what was it again? <laughs> I'm trying to think. But uh, <laughs> uh, maybe I'll come back to this later. Maybe maybe uh, it's it's going to jump in my head sooner or later, this um, okay. podcast. Um, the next question I got for you guys is something that's really, really interesting. Because for people who don't really like know how a VR chat film is being filmed in the first place is how do you film a short film or how do you sh- film a film in VR chat? How do you film a movie in VR chat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, there's so many different ways to go about it. I'm sure everyone's going to have like a really unique kind of process, which is awesome. But like it, it takes <laughs> as much or as little planning as you kind of want to put into it. Some people are just like, they go out on a night and they're like, you know what? I feel like just making something and they just go and do it. And, and that's just what, what happens happens. And then there's other times where like a lot of kind of intricate planning goes into it because we, because we want to, we want to have a script. We want to, we want to have a lot of just complicated complicated uh like choreography in the case of uh the short film that legend and i are currently working on very slowly (laughs) but but we've taken a lot of time to kind of figure out how how all this is how this is going to work um who we need um and i don't i don't know there's it's 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 a big spectrum of of uh of of going about and doing it but um yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure every, everyone else will definitely have a lot better kind of more more thought out kind of ways of explaining it. <laughs> I think so too. I think there are a lot of different <laughs> options to make a VR film. By the way, how uh, because you said it's it's it has a wide spectrum. How would you say where is your spectrum? Where's your guys' spectrum? <laughs> On the very slow end. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. Which, I, which I mean, for 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 a lot of us with like these higher higher quality, like ma- making sure it's higher quality productions. Of course, it's, we're going to take a lot of time for planning and 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 many 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 days of of uh, t- of, of time just to shoot. I know Kong shoots like once a week or like twice a week. I forgot. Two to three, like usually two, two, two to three. Yeah, it's like Wednesdays Four. and Sundays or something. But yeah, that's right. yeah, that, and that that's that's a really that's a really nice schedule that I feel like I should probably do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> We should probably do something like that. But 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 it, yeah, it, whenever whenever you can film and film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I relate. Mm. I relate. <laughs> I really. <laughs> well, to make a movie in VR chat. You need to point your camera at some people and have them do something. <laughs> and really, that's all you need to do to make a movie in general. True. But obviously, the trick is in how you do it and how you add depth and narrative and story to that. And so, what I so I I only know my process. I can't tell you how Kong shoots his movies or how Gab or legend shoot their movies but i can tell you my process Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i write a script and either i find worlds for the script or i have a world in mind but essentially really in vr chat we we have we can do most of what we what we want to do in the film for real because we have access to all these incredible worlds that have all these um amazing things in them and amazing functionality and if we don't have that functionality we can create that using the unity engine we can do whatever we want as long as it can be made in unity so provided that you have the resources you need the actors the avatars the worlds really you just get it all together and you get the actors in the world and go off the script and then the key thing the thing that 
makes it whether it makes it work or makes it not work is how efficiently can you tell a story that way and how can you convey character and how can you convey an acting performance and have all these things be cohesive and authentic and effectively convey the emotion of your story so for me for my process acting is incredibly important and for me it's all about the acting i I take extensive care when I'm choosing my actors and writing their roles in order to make it so they will barely have to act at all and they'll be able to just be themselves and they'll be, but at the same time, I also give them the freedom to take that character and make it their own and breathe their own life into those lines and into that role. And when we're on set, it takes a lot of improvisation, at least in my in the way I do it. It takes a lot of willingness to be able to run with something completely different than what you had planned on set. And that's always difficult. And, you know, I mean, I could get into the technical description of, like, how you operate VRC lens or how mm-hmm. you can line up shots and get how, how you should do uh, use the frame for cinematography, stuff like that. But really, I think what it comes down to is how do you adapt to your surroundings on the set? How do you work with your actors? How do you convey the story and make the ideas in the script come through in what you film? How do you be authentic to that original intention? Because if you ask me what makes a movie a movie, I'll tell you with one word, it's intentionality intentionality is the thing that makes a film a film so not only having a strong and clear intentionality with the story but also being able to effectively convey that intention in the filmmaking process and also have that intention being good you know there is a lot of aspects to how to handle it but the key thing is that you intend what you're doing you construct and visualize everything that you're doing. You can break any rule that you want to break. You can learn all the rules of filmmaking and you can break all of them, but the key thing is that you intended to do it, that you Mm. chose to do this to fit your vision, to fit a bigger picture for a reason, for a purpose. That's what makes movies movies. That's that's, That's the reason why we do what we do. And that's what I try to keep in focus the entire time that I'm working on a movie. So yeah, all you're doing is taking a camera pointing it at some people with a background but the key thing is what are your intentions the intentions. what are you saying what mm-hmm. is your purpose by doing that mm. that's what matters right right oh that's very 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 important the intentions because <laughs> well you couldn't you couldn't just like point a camera at people and just you know call it a day call it a movie bam bam mm. that's i think I, I wish it would be that simple but then where's the intention Right. So, yeah, that's very, very, very important. Oh, God. Well, I, I learned something new today. That's definitely for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Kango, go ahead. Oh, so I think my method is a bit of a very relaxed, conventional film production method, I think. I'm not in film, so I don't know. But um, so I usually it's start with like way, a, yeah. a general, <laughs> general concept. Like, okay. Um, Penrose Protocol, I want two characters to fight to the death and each one represents uh, a specific ideology in this new universe, new millennia. Um, And then I take that concept and we bring it to uh, my team and I'm like, hey, this is, do do you want to do this? This Is it a good idea? And they're like, yeah, sure. We go to the writing stage. Um, That's where we write everything, script, all that sort of stuff. Um, I kind of do this at the same time as storyboarding. Um, Usually you'd storyboard before you go into script, but uh, sometimes blend the two depending on what type of film it is like short films um i don't usually fully storyboard panel by panel um key word or key point is when i say storyboard i don't mean draw everything out i already said i can't draw a circle and i can't draw people <laughs> so um i'm more talking like a written storyboard um but after we get all the script done then we start organizing dev assets um and while dev assets are being produced we kind of just keep going over that script to detail everything out and then we go into the actual filming um, once that script is greenlit. Um, it's different studio to studio. Like the greenlighting process is something that's like really, I guess everyone's kind of different with. Um, at what point do you actually start filming? 
Um, and for me personally, uh, my what I like to do is I actually like to start filming towards the very end of a script's like finishing, like this is completely solidified. Um, mm -hmm. And during days of filming, we obviously film each scene. I usually film chronologically, but I actually like to divide. Um, difficult scenes should be filmed first for me because it it's a it also do with actor bur burnout. Um, that's something I'll talk about when we discuss like the time it takes to make a film, because uh, we're working in a medium that is prone to fatigue, burnout, um, film in general. It's just you know how it is, and VR chat right. as a whole, film uh, burnout mm. is a, a very common thing. And so, the way I design filming schedule, as well as uh, when we do what, um, I count the body actors, the writers, everyone into that equation to make sure no one burns out. Um, that's something I, I'll talk about during the uh, like time it takes to do something. Oh, I never actually thought about this. I mean, we are in VR chat and we can get fatigued. We can get, you know, a little dizzy because we're having this freaking toaster on our, our heads. Sometimes we don't even realize it <laughs> while filming it that we're actually having a big toaster on the head using the cameras and stuff and people who also have to act you know they're also moving they're also moving in reality while doing it in vr and uh, having this kind of like motion blurry thing around you and just you know wiggling your head I th yeah i never actually thought about this this is very interesting i think this is uh, something we really have to elaborate on uh, after i think it's after after this uh, this question i think maybe okay <laughs> very interesting very very interesting okay legend Go ahead. Yeah. So um, a lot of my answer does kind of go toward what Gabbett said earlier. Um, a lot of it depends a lot on like what you're trying to go for. Uh, obviously, different people have different upbringings, different uh, skill when it comes to either acting, editing, uh, VFX, if you go that route. Um, but it also goes down to how much work are you going to like set up your um, your actors with? Right, because that's going to be very reflective of the final product. All the things that you need to uh, take into consideration, um, it helps to make all of these things like predetermined. Way it can kind of reduce how much is required and kind of help to improve the product. But that's always going to vary based on like what the tone of your film is. If it's all like intentional, are you um, are you trying to have your actors? do this certain gesture in a particular way um do you have this kind of genre it's always going to depend like based on what your upbringing is mm -hmm. based on what it is you're trying to achieve based on everyone's skill level and of course that will only improve as you expose yourself more and more to what the environment of vr film is as i have you know i've i've learned of derailed and then i learned of the thriving film community i want to try something myself and I, I try to. I I did prep work. It's a lot of starting with a small idea to make it a big one. I did lots of smaller ideas, essentially. Mm -hmm. But not everybody is going to be, you know, not everyone will always follow that route. But in in summary, it's just gonna always depend. Yeah, yeah. So if you're solo, don't just start working on a Hollywood-based movie. It's just I don't think that's. Oh boy. That's possible. <laughs> oh, no. um, but uh, basically, what, just simply, if you really like to make a VRChat film, you can just start off with the VRChat camera, go into streaming mode, and record it using OBS. And then, mm -hmm. of course, with intention, as uh, Ariel said, it has needs an, an, uh, intention, because... Like I said, like Ariel said, if you would just film somebody who is, I don't know, drinking coffee and uh, what's the story behind it, you know, it's got to be some story behind it or something. And, there, and, and, and there's a, and there's also the fact like, like if you're getting into, if you're getting into making stuff in VR, you don't need VRC lens, you don't need full body, you don't need eye tracking, right. you just need, you just need an idea and knowing what you're going to do with it. Exactly. And just, and, and you just go from there. It's not like, it's not like you need to. Drop. I mean, if if you have VR, you've probably already dropped like three hundred dollars on a headset. But you don't need to drop any more than that. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You don't need to have legs if you don't want. True. But just as as long as as long as you're passionate about what you're doing, as long as as long as 
this yeah. story is what you want. These characters are what you want. And Most important. You can't really go wrong. I wouldn't. You say. don't need legs. You don't need legs. You don't need legs to make film. That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. Then. <clears throat> the next question is, I also have to check if I'm actually still recording. Oh, I'm still recording. Okay, that's good. And it's good news. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is. Oh yeah, that's that should be that should be pretty uh, should be a short answer, I guess. I don't know, at least something that I could also answer as well. How long does filming a short film take? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, the fir the first question is, do you have ADHD or not? <laughs> no, okay. Why not, no. okay. But, 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 but that, that makes it a little harder. But um, it it kind of it, it just it it depends on how much planning you've done, how how long a script you have is. Um, for example, like these are two polar opposites. Um, uh, Legend helped me work on my short film, The Place Where the Spirits Are. The idea happened one night. The next night, um. It was just me and him. We got together. We went to the world. We filmed for three hours. And then we hopped off and he watched me edit for three hours and it was done. Mm. Six hour, six hours. And it was a five minute short film done in six hours. And it, it immensely helped that we only had one actor because we don't have to deal with like multiple people latency. It helped that we didn't have any dialogue. It was basically, it was, it was just like, it was, it was a wordless short film that just conveyed all the emotion and meaning and story through the body movements, <clears throat> which is, which, which helps if you want to make something really short, which I should probably do again because <laughs> I want to make something again. But when it, when it comes to longer stuff, um, like, like the short film we're, we're making, we're making now another round, um, that's, that's involving, that's involving multiple, multiple speaking roles, multiple extras, a lot of choreography that we are, we are implementing, implementing our latency method, to figure out and that's going to take like at least five sessions maybe more of filming of filming to do and and like it's it's not it, it, i feel like it's not even the most complicated it's definitely not the most complicated of stuff that has been made by people at this table it's definitely it's still not at that level because i because ariel and kong have made very impressive stuff and they're keeping st still sure. keeping to up up their quality and that kind of stuff and i and I want to hear more about. I'd love to hear more about the production cycle, of of especially especially Studio Penrose's stuff. So I yeah. also have to mention it, 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 it varies. I also have to mention that the amount of managing that you guys have to do is incredible, and in, in incredible me. in the sense of it's cool, <laughs> but incredible in the sense of it's massive that you guys also have to manage all this stuff because there's a lot going on behind the scenes when it comes to creating a short film or creating a VR chat short film, film, you name it, movie. <laughs> but, you know, um, yeah. there's a lot of managing that goes behind it. And I'm, I'm a simple person. I'll just, you know, hop in. I'll, I'll tell my buddies, yo, let's make a short film, hop in for three hours and then edit this stuff in in the next couple of days and then yeah. it's it's a wrap up basically mm. but B I think big big piece of advice take breaks when you can because yeah. you need them you will need to, you'll need to take breaks when you can definitely definitely that's for sure it's a lot of managing and i really really very much respect that for everyone who's sitting on the table because that's a lot of work a ton of work yeah okay ariel no yeah. i'm interested we have a lot of people's schedules that's for sure yeah oh yeah um so I've um so Kong has the most experience out of all of us. Uh, he's been doing this the longest and has his process kind of dialed in. So I'm very curious to hear what he has to say to this question. I've done this twice. My first film, we filmed it in two days. I wrote the script in two hours before that. It took us like a month to edit because we were being lazy. But, you know, mm. all said and done, that, that movie did not take very long to make. My most recent film is a little short called Don't Let Go that is about three minutes long. I posted on my YouTube. That took, we filmed that in one day. I edited it and, and it, the whole thing was made in about seven days. My film Ulterior Motives took seven months. Whoa. Uh, from original conception to release, it took about seven months to complete. And that's not entirely because of the production. Part of it has to do with there was a lot of scheduling issues and the main mm -hmm. the main reason with that particular movie is 
that we were filming at a lot of um, club events that were actual events that were occurring, which means that we had to film on the day of the event. And if we missed it, we would have to wait until the next one. And there were some events that were never going to happen again. So we had to absolutely make sure we nailed it. Um, and we did have some issues with, um, you know, my lead actor was getting interrupted a lot by her parents, which is an interesting thing we'd have to deal with in VR chat that you wouldn't have to deal with on an actual movie set. Um, where she was just kind of had a situation going on that made it difficult for her to mm. always commit. And um, it's, I don't want, don't want to make any disparaging comments against Maple. She's absolutely incredible. I'm overjoyed that I got the chance to work with her and she did an amazing job on the film, but it did, that did cause a lot of delays for us on the production. And so that's just one reason of, there were just so many moving parts. There were so many people involved with that film so many people's schedules I had to track, so many actors, so many events that we had to film at, events I had to plan so that we could film at. I planned club events so that we would fill a room for the background actors for the film. Like, that that, that kind of stuff is just crazy. I, I, I Kong did that for another uh, project of his as well. Um, it's, it's So you'll understand. It's, it's insane trying to do that and trying to pull something like that off. And... Um, it's it's just a really a matter of how complex the project is and how much um, effort you put into it. If you write a if you write a short film that's one scene, one world, two actors, you can do that in a day or a couple days. You you could do you could have the film done in a week. If you write a film that, like me that had eight scenes across various uh, locations, which required massive amounts of background actors in the scenes to be the club goers most of which i ended up just filming at the actual events so they were actual club goers mm. that's a huge project that takes a lot of planning that takes a lot of scheduling and it 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 was a 30 minute film it took a humongous amount of time to edit and process all that footage as well so it depends on the complexity of the project and me i have this uh curse i guess where i tend to make each project of mine as ambitious as i possibly can and that's always you know that's always wonderful <laughs> uh, but yes i'm very eager to hear what kong has to say about this because you've been doing this a long time so. but i also have to say that i have a lot a lot a lot of respect for that amount of planning for that film for uh, seven months and that much of it was planning. I mean, schedule issues. Yeah, that that, that really happens. That's it, it's awful. It's awful to to um, have scheduling issues when it comes to like the filmmaking scene. Uh, it really is. But the planning, I have a lot of respect because it's just so much that you kind of I, I wouldn't say put on your shoulders, but that that you technically have. In, in your back mind to do for for that film for that movie and that's that's a lot of work and i have a lot of respect for that seven months ulterior motives it's very good very good <laughs> and i said it with with a goofy voice very good there you go <laughs> <laughs> okay kango go ahead yeah um so it, it i think it is important to list out a couple things um so My first uh, short film with Metacosm was voicemail. And contrary to popular belief, that thing took a total of two weeks. Um, mm. And we'll get into that in a second. Um, and The Penrose Protocol, which was my next Metacosm film, that took six months. And Emergence, which was the film for Raindance, um, Studio Penrose's film, that took uh, a total of about a month for filming and a couple extra weeks for writing. Um, and there's a huge variation to it. And uh, I guess most people would necessarily just straight up attribute that to the complexity of each film. Um, voicemail was very simple, two characters, one world, um, not too much dialogue and very, uh, I guess, simple cinematography. Um, Penrose Protocol had a lot of complexity, a two minute long fight sequence, all continuous, um, not continuous shot, but continuous like sequence. And it opened, that film opened with an entire two minute long continuous sequence where the camera doesn't cut at all. Um, at least not that you can see. 
<laughs> and so that film was a lot more complex. And so those scenes took a lot longer to film. Um, and with uh, Emergence, um, that took a month because the film itself is actually kind of simple. Um, it is a narrative uh, film, but it doesn't have a lot of dev necessities or anything crazy like that. Um, but the nuance to all these statements is that I think this is a good time to talk about ethics um, because it's something that new studios should establish pretty early on or new directors should establish pretty early on. Um, Gab mentioned that I usually film twice a week and I do. Um, I usually film twice a week, two times um, normal film sessions and sometimes an extra cleanup session that's usually like two hours or an hour long. Um, and we always film on Wednesday and Saturday. Um, the reason for that is because burnout is the biggest issue mm. that most people will encounter in doing stuff like this. Um, the reason why I've been able to continue doing this stuff for so long without like burning myself out immediately is because I've limited myself to what we do. And so those timelines, though, yeah, they're attributed to complexity. For the most part of them, we never exceeded like two film or two or three film sessions a week. And those film sessions remained usually, unless it was a continuous thing that we had to do in one film session, um, they were never more than three to four hours long. Mm. Um, I don't want my body actors burning out. And, well, I don't want to burn myself out either. And uh, you mentioned planning. And so planning is the director's responsibility. Um, if it's your project, you have to be able to know how long things should take and be very vocal about that to your team. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so technically speaking, every one of these films could have been finished way faster than the, the six months or the, the one month or the one week. Um, but I don't want to burn my people out. Like, uh, mm. we don't get paid for this. This is a hobby for me. Um, and I don't intend to make payments for this at all. Um, I have a job in real life. I have to tend to relationships in real life, family. Um, and that goes for every one of my team. Um, and that's why I refuse to overdo the film sessions. Um, yeah. It's important in that regard. Um, so that's kind of the, the project timeline for me is it's dependent not only on the complexity of the scenes, but limited, I guess, by our studio's sort of uh, um, ethics. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very important. It's very important to mention that um and how can I how can I word it? I'm sorry, my <laughs> my my first language is making some trouble right now. Um, mm. Is you you have to care about the people that you're working with the movie with, and I think that's the very 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 most important thing, because not only are you also uh, working with them obviously, but um, and want want them to also be a part of the movie and part of your project, but you also got to make sure that they stay healthy in a mental and physical way to still pa participate in their hobby of body acting or film uh, filming it, uh, in general. And limiting that as well is, I think, an incredibly well idea to not well get a burnout obviously or get fatigue or if you do the body acting and go full body sprinting in vr while also doing it rl not getting any like dizziness or anything that's very very important that's very important also to mention very important um, there's there's one more thing i want to add on mm -hmm. um and this is like a really positive thing about that idea of like focusing on your body actors mentalities and like make sure everyone's like happy is um, y'all ever have that one project in school or college or anything at work where your boss literally forces you to work overtime over and over and over. Mm. And even if you really like that project, when it's done, you you care more about it being done than the actual product. You're just like, oh God, it's finally done. Finally. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> what I've noticed is by doing that sort of planning as a director and like spreading the time out so that... We, we, we sacrifice a little bit of, you know, we get to release this later, but as a result, um, everyone's a lot more excited about the release of the film. Um, I've noticed that my team, my body actors, my writers and stuff, they are always really excited when we're about to show that film out on stage. They don't care about that like process it took to get there because it wasn't 
it wasn't hell. I mean, it, it was difficult um, for most of these films, but it wasn't like it, it was so bad that we were overworking ourselves and ruined our own film. Um, mm -hmm. As a director, that's important. Like you want to be proud of what you do. And if you burn yourself out, it, it, it ain't, you're not going to be proud of it, <laughs> right? Nearly as much. Then it's just a finished product, but, you know, uh, not the one that you intended to uh, to to have a f has have finished uh, ad wait right, no wait it's it's not like the finished product that you really wanted to have just when you you know overwork yourself that's true that's true i think that's that's how i wanted to put it into words right right mm -hmm. okay uh legend go ahead <laughs> sure so um in regard to length when filming again this this is going to greatly depend on how much prep work that you're going to do and how much you're going to put in. Um, the amount of things that you can take into consideration with like play space limitations or like clever workarounds that you're going to do, the number of things that you can take into consideration, like for example, uh, instead of saying you're going to have an actor move on this very specific set path, um, but when you go on the film day, oh, we have another hurdle, This there's a physical thing that's here that's preventing our actors here, didn't take that into consideration, now we have to find a way to work around that things that would be like little drawbacks you could take more time in like the setup phase to find ways and be more um be more adamant and saying this is what's going to happen these are the things that we took into account this is the way we're going to work around these things um for example like if you have um like say you want to have a character that leans over a bar for example right and the bar itself is physical if you try and lean into that bar, anyone that is familiar in the space of VR chat, you'll notice that your avatar will kind of freeze up until the point before you go over that bar. Of course, we have ways where we can go around it, in which case you say, all right, well, we're going to have you lean up over the bar, but you're going to open your VR chat menu, big menu. That way your collider stays right where it is. That way we can still pull off this stunt. I mean, you take into consideration with all the prep work that you do. And even particularly when it comes down into fight choreography, for example, um, lots of ways you want to make sure how you have your actors move, make sure you're not moving them too much in a small amount of time or how you're going to divide your shots to the point you're not going to actually you know, cause injury, make them hit things that are around in their environment. Uh, even for our film that I'm working on, we have um, all the things that we're getting to make the latency stuff work. Uh, I've sent the image of all the individual <laughs> files. All um, it's You could flash it on if you want. It's... 99 individual files that are it's for crazy. different actors yes different <laughs> actors uh sounds different it, they serve a very important purpose but all of that is just to solve a simple problem of latency so we can be more deterministic and get more results faster mm, mm, mm. mm. kind of like sorted in each yes each, yes each uh, file. yes and please yes and please for love of, for the love of everything that is good organize early you'll save yourself so much headache. oh my god mm. yeah mm. organizing <laughs> that for sure i I'll, if you guys have seen the image that was popped up right now that's that's what uh legend mentioned uh and means by it's crazy there's a lot of stuff <laughs> to say the least <laughs> and um I think yeah th this this is going to be like very simple as well this question yeah, this are there any on. projects you are working on recently or currently or planning on <laughs> yeah well uh i've legend i've touched upon like the short film we're working on multiple times it's we we <laughs> It's had a very long and kind of disappointing <laughs> planning process because <laughs> we initially wanted to get it out like in July and whoa it's like nearly November. I don't know when you're releasing this, but it's maybe it is November. <laughs> maybe it's whenever. <laughs> but but it's 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 been very slow. But I'm kind of grateful that it's kind of taken so long, just because we've had more time to really not rush things and and test more things and know what we're going to be doing. Um, and and it's it's kind of allowed us to space stuff out, like. Like I, I got I got a little burned out on it a tiny bit, and I've I, I think spacing the time out has kind of helped me. Uh, at, le at least since I also have school going on, like it's mm -hmm. kept me like at least I have at least a little bit of mind in the project at all times, which is good. Um, but when it comes to when it comes to other projects, like sometimes sometimes people ask me to to do camera work for them and so i just 
am on set for a day helping them with stuff. Um, Legend and I are also on a crew with uh, OK Donuts for some of his projects as well, right? So that that should be fun. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that are also Ooh. wanting to make a lot of stuff, and they and they either want advice or they want help. And I'm just I want to be there for as many people as possible uh, that that uh, want to make stuff. That's gonna be sometimes goes to, goes into my detriment. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, I try my best to manage everything. That's gonna be interesting. Okay, donuts. Okay, okay. <laughs> that also fits very well. <laughs> okay. Ariel, are you working on any projects recently? That is a good question. Um, I have multiple ideas that I would like to get working on at some point. I, as I mentioned before, I have a tendency to opt for very ambitious projects, which means that they take more time for me to prepare and plan out. Um, and I'd like to continue to make very ambitious short films and eventually start moving in the direction of making a feature film. But mm -hmm. for now, I've also been uh, starting... I, I've made a couple of um, short-form videos recently that really blew up on Twitter. So I'm really looking at the, uh, the short-form content as something to look at in the, in the near future, making more films that are like just a few minutes long that I can finish size. that I can finish mm -hmm. in a week uh, that I can use to try out some new technique or try out some skill or like get just get better at working with acting performances or whatever. So I'd like to do more of those short sort form films, but really my passion is making these really big ambitious projects of which I have a few planned and I have the ideas pretty clearly planned out. I just need to actually get going on them and um stay tuned that's all i can say Ooh. i'm gonna have big things in the works coming soon okay and they're gonna be really yeah. impressive when they're done so let's go that's gonna be interesting because you know i love i love short films especially in vr chat so you guys can be very sure that i'll be watching these movies these yeah i need more films. of your delicious delicious color grading I need more oh of it because it's just all I just <laughs> my heart every time every time I <laughs> like I I rewatch I rewatch re uh I rewatch ulterior motive sometimes and I'm just like oh my god it looks so freaking good you put so much work into that I <laughs> and I love it thank you okay good it can go what are you working on recently or what are your plans for the future so um I have two main things I'm working on um. One is actually a series, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but it'll be... We're aiming for around eight episodes, um, and it'll detail a lot more about what I'm about to touch on. But the second thing is also a feature-length film, which I've started uh, back at Metacosm, continuing on Studio Penrose. Mm -hmm. um, but basically because we've developed this cinematic universe of new millennia, um, we're going to develop that, I guess storyline um emergence is the start of it all it's one of the main characters of our series entering the city for the very first time um and the penrose protocol the thing on metacosm's channel um that is an example of what happens to people that are involved with the i guess corrupt slash a little bit dark slash messed up factions of the city and so we're going to dive really deep into that um, the feature-length film is actually a play on that same storyline, um, just in a different perspective. And that one is going to be a lot more emotional, um, and it focuses a lot more on the human aspect of the city, whereas the series will focus on the city structure and, I guess, the tragedy of it. Um, think of it like a modern-day uh, example of today's society, but with a lot more technology. Not cyberpunk, but um, just a rendition of us. Uh, and it's a uh, the series and film are they take a lot of inspiration from certain like anime as well as uh, like certain shows um so if you've ever seen a sort of dystopian show type deal where there's warring factions or corruption um where the city is the biggest villain in a way um that's kind of what this is going to be uh Ooh. every character 
And this is one thing I want to make somewhat clear. Um, this may be a little too much information, but it's fine. Um, there is no such thing as a character who is fully in the wrong or fully a villain. Everyone's a victim of circumstance what we're writing. And that's the tragic nature of what we're doing. Oh. I love moral ambiguity. Mm. <laughs> this is great. This is great. <laughs> the way you um, the way you uh, describe it or or t tell it to us, it reminds me a little bit of you know 2022 the Batman kind of like this dark city that is like <laughs> corrupt and it's all Gotham. dark, dark LA's. Yeah. I love these movies. They're so I love these dark movies. You, I'm all in for this. I'm all in for this. I love dark movies like. You know, Joker was also kind of dark in uh, 2019. More, it had a little bit more color, I feel like, compared to the Batman of 2022. But it was really still like, it's also dark. It's like dark DC, you know, mm -hmm. I love this stuff. And having like a VR chat, dark, short film would be so cool. I'm all in. I'm all into this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited too. Let's go. <laughs> Legend, what are you working on recently? So I'm still working on um, the current film that I have in tandem with Gab. The one that we're still working on, like the little smaller things. Um, we do have a rather large roadmap of all of the things that we want to uh, work with as well. Lots of them are, are very experimental because they try to play around with a certain idea that we want to do. Play around a bit with like the way that we move actors, the way we have... Um, more dynamic changes to mm -hmm. the way the models are portrayed. Um, other ways that we actually get the viewer a little more involved all the way up until we can take all of these ideas to make something that is able to take everything that we've done before and make something that's as grand as we can possibly make it. It's like all of these other smaller things that we work on are aiming to set up our larger project because they're mm -hmm. doing some, they're, experimenting on a smaller component and we can use those little bits that do well and aim for our hopefully more feature length project toward the very end mm -hmm. Oops. whoops um, <laughs> almost suited out nope, there uh, this oh, also I'll ariel's dad oh, Ariel. me. i'll sort this out <laughs> <laughs> can i recalibrate while ariel's reloading <laughs> yeah no have you, problem have you also been still have you also been still like planning stuff around the the <laughs> stuff you were you were talking about wow you were... spoiler what <laughs> hey. i haven't even said that i was doing that i'll censor I, I that I, 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 you you had you had stuff on right i wanted i wanted to know yeah, but it's bad, yeah. about it. I, I... wow you know no, what I... what you know are what? you gonna jay slot me you're getting jay slotted <laughs> 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 I'll this keep is, that a sensor. Don't worry. Don't worry. I, I don't I'm, know. I don't know anything about production stuff. I just know. I, I just restart. know about it. There's gonna be a PC restart. Give me a sec. No. Okay. Emerald. Okay. We'll do a Ariel, small Emerald little break DLC. before we continue, and <laughs> we only have two more questions to go, and then we're all set. Okay. You want me to camera cut? <laughs> yeah. Let's do a let's do a little camera cut. Okay, well, oh here we are back again from a little coffee break and uh, yeah. <laughs> can't go. <laughs> Average college student. <laughs> Average. <laughs> you, got, you got your own studio. I mean, honestly, I'm not blaming. <laughs> There's a lot of coffee on the table. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. And um, got the coffee in the coffee dragon. Right we we went we we were at the question Ed what we've been working on and i also have to reveal something re reveal something that i have actually two movies not in the making but <laughs> in the script process and uh, mm. i can't wait to show you guys once it's out there <laughs> you got to you got to you got to yeah you got to let us know when you're when you end up premiering them cuz i will we'll see we'll see that's very cool. We will, we're all, we will, we will get big old, big old group of people. Oh yes, this, yeah. oh yes. We're all working on something, and I can't wait for everyone to, to show you guys and to see all the stuff you guys create for all the people out there, especially for you guys listening this to this nice and cozy podcast. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow the, the people that are sitting on this table, on Twitter, on YouTube, on every platform. I'll link them down in the description so you don't miss out on anything okay and the next question is <laughs> <laughs> where is it there's my question 
The next question, we keep this one short, and after that, we have the last question for this podcast. But the next question is, and I think this is very, very interesting for the people who are listening, who are wanting to get into filmmaking. But we also kind of elaborated on that when we explained how how we film a short film is are there any tips you would give to someone who would love to start out with vr filmmaking mm. i know uh, uh a few questions ago i was i was talking about this earlier but like um no matter where you are with vr like you can make you can make stuff the the game provides you to the, to the tools to make whatever you want. It provides you the stream camera, the default camera. It is it's a it's a very versatile tool and it's very nice for starting out. Um, uh, you you don't need to you don't need to drop hundreds of dollars on full body. You don't need to drop hundreds of dollars on on uh, face tracking, uh, eye tracking, and mouth tracking, or even like you 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 don't even need like like. Like, like at, at an extreme example, you don't even need like a PC. Like Legend, I've seen like films made completely like Quest, like with Quest footage, which is pretty cool. Like it, it's like in a one by one format because that's what the that's what the Quest. I, I, I'd love I'd love to see someone like uh, really really make something uh, with the with the Quest headset with like that really cool aspect ratio. But mm. um, just just j you really just need to start. Like that's that's what a lot of advice is given like with just filmmaking, like because you, like with filming now, now you have your phones and stuff like that, IRL. But with here, you you have the camera, you have, you can control the focus manually. You can control, you can do a lot of stuff that you wouldn't be able to do with your phone in VR. And I think that's, that that's just, that should be like a really motivating thing to get someone started as well as all of the, all of the lots of content that's already out there. There's like a whole big list of content that True. you can watch if you want to. We and that that just provides that us very to yes, a we have. neat database, which we could provide a link to. Which it's pretty outdated. I need more to or think. less. Yeah, we, it, it needs to be updated. But we have a database of more or less every VR chat film that we are aware yes. of. Oh, mm -hmm. I've been yes, keeping yes, yes. some of the films that have been releasing, so I could probably fill you in. That'd be awesome. Yes, thank you. Should, we, need to, is, we need to update that list. Is there? It's, is it's there, updated up to like May of 2023. I think. Is there a link to uh to to that list for the people to um, check it out? We can we'll provide you. Yes. Link to put in the YouTube description. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Nice. Okay, Ariel. Then what are your um recommendations or tips for someone who would love to start out with VR filmmaking? Yeah, very much like what Gab said. Just start. I mean, the tools are already at your disposal. The VR chat stream camera is really all you need. Um, you don't need full body. You don't need that stuff. We have all these amazing worlds for you to go to. Literally, just find a cool world that you like and get a friend or two and just figure out some way that you can use that world to tell a story, something like that. Um, for those people that maybe have a little bit more experience already having done filmmaking kinds of stuff, this is a really great playground to experiment with different kinds of creativity that you never would have had access to in the real world. You could make a space movie with astronauts and it would cost you nothing. You could make a movie about dinosaurs, it would cost you nothing. As long as you can find the worlds and resources and avatars that you need, it'll, it'll be very minimal budget to make any kind of creative idea you want. You can utilize the technical power of the Unity engine to create all kinds of different things. Like, you know, for example, Hotel Kadesh just released their Dolly M system, which enables mm -hmm. you to have Dolly movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's free that they've, they've put it out into the world for free. And you can, you can have a, a complicated Dolly movement system in your film for, for as long as you can decipher the Japanese, as long, well, no, they released an English <laughs> I don't, guide. I'm joking. They've they released, released an English, English guide? guide now yeah, at this point. Yeah. So so it's <laughs> Okay. It's, <laughs> I need to watch that. <laughs> no, it's 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 like the 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 tools and technology we have at our disposal is phenomenal. So uh for me, for someone like me, I had a little bit more experience in real life cinema filmmaking when I came into VR chat and I have been working on using that knowledge and that understanding to add a 
realistic and genuine authentic background to what i do in vr filmmaking and that's the kind of stuff that's really going to push this over the edge is when people take what they know from real life movies and start incorporating that into vr chat and seeing how they can bring genuine filmmaking which translates uh, completely to vr chat and bringing that into their own films but honestly like Gab said, just start, just try something, just, just throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. And, <laughs> you know, don't work too hard on a project unless you know it's a winner. And in my case, I, I try to, I try to hit a home run every time, but you know, the, 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 the experimentation is the lifeblood of our community and everybody that I, I, I just love going on YouTube and seeing films that are really cool that do something I've never seen in VR chat film before from someone I've never heard of and never met. That's my favorite thing ever. And I want to see more of that. So, uh, but please, if you do make a film, please tell us so that we can watch it. And, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that that's important. If you do make a film, please tell us. Uh, oh, yeah. yes, definitely. That uh, we, we need more people to show us very cool films and even even just just the archit films go ahead you can send them all to to ariel to me to kango to everyone who is also creating films because we're all interested in in that mm. i pretty much reckon yeah, so don't be afraid don't and anybody who's interested in this stuff don't be afraid to reach out we love helping people get into it true it's true. probably the most open community yeah, absolutely most easy easy to reach people i'd say like it's not like you're reaching out to Martin Scorsese through like a bunch of like studio execs or like agent people. You're just reaching out to people. Yeah, We're just, just people, regular right? Chat players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically, yep. we just happen to like making movies. True. We want to help make movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kango. What are your tips and tricks? Very simple. Um, as a new director, plan. Meaning, make sure that you know what your script is going to be, what your ideas are what you plan to do with the film, what you want to do with the film. And uh, this, I guess the second tip is just learn your equipment, um, cameras, editing, all sort of stuff. This is all stuff that directors can do on their own time. And when you're ready after just doing your research and your due diligence, execute. Find your people to, to start filming. Um, get your groups. Reach out to friends. If you don't have body actors, uh, maybe ask friends. Um, or reach out... Uh, well, kind of to us, actually. I've had people reach out um, about that. And we have a, uh, what Ariel's mentioning was our film community Discord. Um, and we kind of try to help people with stuff like that. So, but I guess the, the big summary is just make sure to plan everything out, do everything that you can on your side so that when you start reaching out to other people, it'll be really smooth, you know? True, true, true. Uh, that's very, that's when you notice that the VRG community is incredibly open so if somebody wants to start out they could ask for our advice or maybe for help and we would do it i would definitely help out because it's just so much fun there's there's a certain passion behind it that we're all doing here sitting on the table and talking about filmmaking because you know it's our passion we love it we love to we love to film we love to create stuff we love to be creative uh, bring our ideas that are stuck in our head on paper and in visual form and I think people who also want to do that but are kind of like struggling to put these visuals in form uh, in in a video form or in script they can reach out to us and uh, you know we can help them give them advice and that's the coolest thing about this community in my opinion that we're helping each other out and that's so 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 important that we have this community for for already people that are inside but also for people who want to join and be a part of it that's really important that's true okay then legend sure. um I, i've got two good tips that i could all offer for um people who want to get into filming first one make proof of concept um start by taking what What's you want to take a look at? You know, what's the big goal you want to achieve? Find that and break down all the necessary steps that are required to make that possible. It can be as simple as 
um, uh, with how the actors are supposed to move. Are they flexible to do the motions? Uh, how is the camera moving? Does the camera need to move in a very specific set path? Is there a is there any use of VFX shots? Is there anything that requires editing limitations that you need to work around with? Whether if that's by software or the person that's handling it, find ways to like take those little things, make something smaller with it. That way you can see what you have to work with. That way you can work your way slowly up to make what you really want to make. And um, second good tip is, you know, observe observe your environment. See what everybody else is making. Everyone has a lot of very creative and talented ideas. I'm sure there's definitely a film out there that probably hits somewhere close to home of something that you want to make. One of the inspirations I actually never mentioned um, for my film, I actually started a bit with um, Twice's Twice VR with um, his How to Fight in VR chat. It was the second one that got a lot of inspiration from me. It was a, it was you know, it had you know a fight scene that it was involved with it. But my takeaway from that is, you know, I wanted to have something. I understand that he had you know the actors that were there, physical actors. And I wanted to do something a bit different with that one, and I wanted to have more movement and something that was more organic, something that was not, you know, artificially sped up. So I focused more on, like, casting all that myself, though I had the assistance through being able to act it all myself. I wanted to be a little more experimental by creating that speed myself, and I was able to make something that felt more energetic and natural. And I do urge that people... See what else you can learn to see what everyone else is making. Mm -hmm. Basically, get inspired, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's <laughs> yeah. um, that's to, to say it in one word. I can <laughs> if I, the way I, yeah. that I heard it is, but yeah, check your environment if you want to go on filmmaking and uh, just look around. Get inspired if you see that no one had made the idea that you really wanted to uh, make by yourself, then go and make it, basically. Just try out and experiment until uh, you find something that works, I guess. I, I can't really say much because I'm not really a good... I wouldn't say I'm a good filmmaker myself. In What? Sitting, sitting at the stage. No, I'm sorry. I'm Come sorry. on. I'm <laughs> We've seen your stuff. <laughs> I'm a good content creator, but I'm not a good filmmaker, in my opinion. The story that I that I usually write, they since since Ariel mentioned intention, I always have this word that my, some of the stuff I do has no intention. But that's uh, that's a that that's something for 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 for, for something else. <laughs> that's for something else. Okay. Um. Anyways, the last question, y'all. Hold oh, on, super okay. tight to your seats. Because this is the most important question to this podcast. This is also the last question. And the last question is... No, I have to change the camera to make it more dramatic. Is VR cat or VR rat? Oh. Boom. <laughs> boom. Oh, my God. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, man. Go ahead. Oh, man. No, I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, 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 VR Rat has taken my heart recently, to be honest. I think it's just the goofiest thing just ever. Just the fact that you can just wear it and just just waddle around and it's just and it's got this derpy looking face. I don't know. It's just <laughs> you can just you can like swarm lobbies and it's so it's so goofy. I don't know. I, I love I, lo I like VR Rat. I like it. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> That's this, my, yeah. I had to had to put this question out there. It's gonna be a tradition asking this in the Creator VR <laughs> podcast for the last question. Ari, what do you think? What is your take? Rats are working class heroes. VR rat is for the people. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> all in. All in. Kango, your opinion. Oh, I'm gonna be beat up for this one. I bought oh. I bought the the VR cat, so I got to stick with the VR cat. Also, Vox thingy, so kind of like a cat. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we'll do an exception you, you this time. Then, <laughs> <laughs> Legend, what do you think? Oh, I've always been a big fan of tradition. It's VR cat for me. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We can, I see. We can settle. We, we can settle this right here if you okay, want. Okay. 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 Yeah. No. 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 Violence at the table. Imagine no how to sorry, fight. I wouldn't mess with them. <laughs> I would not mess with no. them. Hong's already been traumatized. <laughs> yeah, I have. Multiple times. Got beat up like it's 30 times. It's the trains. Okay, no. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. This was the Creative VR Podcast. A big, big shout out to the people who are sitting on this table. Gaps, Ariel Emerald, Kanga Uul, and Legend. And I will link them all down in the description with all the links that I find and get. And also a huge thanks to our best cameraman, Gersivo, who is Woo! managing the cameras for this time. Woo. Come here, come on, give, give me a hug, give me a hug. Wait, wait, you, <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> our big friend, Gersivo, who is managing the cameras that you guys see here, making all uh, them close-ups for this podcast because if i would do it myself again like i did in the first episode i would lose my freaking mind and the other thing is i want to uh, thank my ko-fi supporters gingari yoshi artemis and vifslex and yes i remember those names you guys are not forgotten i promise and that's all for this podcast and <laughs> do you guys want to leave something else for the viewers uh Hmm. I mean, go out there and make stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to see it. We all want to see it. Yeah, yeah. you got a you got a whole community stuff. that wants to watch your stuff. True. Just right out the gate. No one is gonna yeah. beat we're, you. This up. is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. We're we're just this on the just precipice the of of something that could change the way movies are made, and it's perfect time to get started. It's the perfect time to come and join us, and we're eager to see what everybody makes. True. True. That, that I would Thanks, Joe out. Hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's a homie. <laughs> Joe is a real homie. Shout yeah, outs. Yeah. Shout outs. And to summarize it all up, filmmaking is cool. If you have a film, publish the film. Be a part of this amazing community. This table and this podcast episode was so much fun to make. I'll be honest. We tried. This is our second try because our first try was kind of like a little, <laughs> a little messy. But that's okay. That's okay. You know, we st we we fall down to the ground and we still stand back up and make something good out of it. And as always, everyone, take care in the virtual as well as in reality. And we'll see you in the next Creative VR podcast. Have a good one, everyone. Bye -bye. Woo! Let's go.